You know, last Friday, we spoke about the blessing. I spoke about something about the blessing of the Lord. It doesn't come with sorrow. And I say, I suppose you spoke about full thing, which really I didn't go in deep about that. If you follow my message on last Friday, you will understand I didn't go on detail on the message. I say I will speak about four things, the blessing of the Lord. And then today, I'm about to speak about that blessing, the blessing of the Lord. I want to lay some foundation because I believe this year I want to see the things which we never see in our life. Amen. I want to see the word of God be more tangible than just the letter. Because sometimes the word of God is the letter in our life which is not really uh, powerful and that we know about the letter, but we don't, we don't see. We don't see the act, action of that letter. But my message today is to lay the foundation of the letter which will lead you to manifest that letter to be more tangible for your life. Amen. To understand that the word is not just the letter, but it's the spirit and the life. And then when we say about the blessing, just like a letter or a phrase, but it contains many things which you need to understand to help you during this year. That's why I say, I will uh, speak about the same message. By the way, I will do it today. I will break it with some question. And uh, I will call it some people to tell me. That's why I put those three chairs here. To tell me about what you think about the blessing of the Lord. When we are speaking about a blessing, how do you understand? Because sometimes we think the blessing of the Lord is about going to heaven. And then the life is about going to heaven. I begin to understand it's not all just about the heaven. Because if the blessing was just about going to heaven, the day you and I will become a born again, we should be, be we should be in the heaven by now. But if you and I, we are still living, you need the blessing to live. Come on, somebody. You need the blessing of the Lord to make it. And the operation of the blessing of the Lord, it doesn't work according to human thinking. I will try to open it to someone to understand. Because sometimes the people that think like, if whatever the people say, one thing I want to try to say to somebody here is, the force of the people are not the force of God. Even though we can be 10,000 people, we make agreement to something, doesn't mean that God agrees with us. Amen? Because sometimes the people that think like that when I was speaking on Friday, I said, what's making the word of God be more uh, powerless is not because of the word of God, but the doctrine of men. Because there is a way ourselves we see the things, and when we come to conclusion, according to our own way of thinking, which is not God's way, and the word which of God, which is carrying the power, we become more powerless because God will not support your idea, but God is always support his own idea. Come on, somebody, amen. God will not support your thinking, but God will support what he says. And what he says is already said. Come on, somebody. What God is saying now is not saying right now, but it's already said many years ago. But the problem is this. Whatever God says, sometimes because of our situation, we don't take the word of God in consideration. 
we don't take the word of God in consideration. And the word of God become more powerless. Powerless. And the blessing of God doesn't produce in our life because we have our own way. Amen. Because we have our own way. And I would help someone because this year I've been praying and I'm still praying. And I say, Lord, I don't want to see the church to be like this. I don't see people to look broke. I don't see people to look face like they are going through always when you see them with a problem. I want to see people be free. I want to see the church where the people are able to express their freedom. I want to see the church where the people have given a testimony how they are blessed. I want to see the people, I want to see the church where the people are coming and give the testimony of their healing and the restoration, Amen. how God touched their life. I want to see where the people understand it's not about my idea, but it's about what God said. I want to see the people, those who need the word of God, not according to the according to the worldly system but according to the kingdom system because you need to understand the blessing of the Lord will not operate according to the worldly system but it's operated according to the kingdom system because are not connected with the worldly system the production of the blessing of the Lord are connected according to our kingdom system and now when the people are getting applied the system of the kingdom they have become automatically fruitful in their life and the blessing automatically he become part of their life but when you know when the worldly system is still part of our life begin to question what God is saying the blessing of God it become more powerless no matter what God will say become more powerless. Now, let me sit. Can you put uh, for me a verse in the Bible there and I will be talking together with you about this verse. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. Please. And all the kids, I want you to be quiet, I don't want you to be, because you don't want to be blessed too. I want you to extend. I had a very good look. Okay, I want somebody, no, 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 just to uh, 22. Can you give me uh, another version, please? From the Lord. From the Lord. And do not obey his watch. That's why we need to be listening in these last days. Believe me, the year 2012 is a year of blessing within the body of Christ. But it will be a year of cursing outside in the world, in, outside the body of Christ. So, we within the body of Christ, will be, there will be an acceleration, there will be a transformation, and even in this church, there's going to be a blessing of a resettlement of enlarging of his tent, of moving from one place to another before the end of this year. The movement started. What God has put in our hearts, that's a blessing. And what is God going to do from now on as we follow the voice of the Spirit of the Living God is a blessing. And we are going to be blessed. On one condition, as I said, I start, started it, obey the words of the Lord. Let the spirit of the living God in you be present in your lives. Don't let it lie down as just resident. There's no power. No power. It's useless to have its resident. So the blessing can take us to a place where God wants each one of us to be. Blessing which comes from God and God alone. And it is only for His people, only for His children to enjoy. 
All that God has, all that He has, is just for us. That is His blessing. Amen. 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 I want to bless your life because sometimes the people they are confused about what's going on in my life. And when we try to summarize what men of God say, the blessing of the Lord is connected to getting obedience. If you obey, is what I talk about the system because we have about two systems. If you are not obeying God's word, and even though the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord is upon your life, but what will, what will activate that blessing is uh, the obedience of the word of God in your life. Amen? If you obey what God is saying to you, that blessing will take you where you are going. That blessing will take you where you are going. Can we give big hand to Pastor Alan again, please? Thank you. Pastor Freddy, I just want to know more about the world. What do you understand about this? Because we are looking about uh, the context the Bible says. The Patriots for the blessing of the Lord to make the place of the rich. The blessing, the blessing of the Lord make a person rich. And I began to look in the church today. It seemed to me like, you know, I don't want to say it, but how are you rich? I'm not speaking about spiritual riches because sometimes church people we are we are hiding ourselves beyond us saying we are spiritual riches. Now, if we are spiritual riches, but we still need the things. Like now we are talking about having a building. And now if we say we are spiritual riches, that spiritual riches, how are we going to bring it to be more? How are we going to materialize it to, for, to help us to have our own building where we can be able to worship the Lord? Amen. And now, Pastor Freddy, can you just tell us please about what you understand about where the Bible is saying about the blessing of the Lord make a person rich. How do you interpret it? Amen. Everybody like uh, five hours. I think this is a this is as the body of Christ. This is a serious matter. Really, we have to to deep down and uh, to understand the mind of God. Many times we become so religious and. Uh, we are following uh, people's doctrine and uh, what the people say, what people believe, they don't believe. But uh, I think we need to understand the God, 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 God mind. I, I, I'm not going to read uh, two, two scriptures just to tell you, so you just to, to learn from nation. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's put the divine, divine Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He said that, uh, and uh, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth. Amen? Amen. Uh, if I can uh, replace some, some word here, if can, this verse normally should be read like this. And uh, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who bless you. Did you see that? He is he who bless you to get work. So that connects us in the, in the Proverbs chapter 10. It's the blessing of God that, that makes rich. And the problem is we have a confusion about blessing. The blessing is not a car. The blessing is not a suit. The blessing is, is not a new fridge or whatever you 
All these things, cars, wife, husband, children, they are the result of the blessing. The blessing is the, the empowerment. It's like a coat. When you are wearing that coat, you are empowered to release the produce to produce. And then the other thing also, I, I, I learned carefully in these two scriptures, I have a couple of scriptures, but we don't have time. The, the, the wealth doesn't produce the blessing, but the blessing produces the wealth. Come on. Did you see that? I'll say it again. Come on. The riches doesn't produce the blessing. That's why you see people I could feel feel rich, but they are not blessed. Yes, come on. It's the blessing that produces wealth, but not the other way around. So the, if we see the, the life of Joseph, Joseph was blessed because he was empowered for that. Even his brother took the court and thought now oh, maybe the court and uh, the court was the blessing. No. Because when you are, you, are, you are blessed, they can remove everything around you, but you still blessed. Come on. Because you will still produce. And uh, I study and I understand and uh, I revolt myself. It, it is an insult in the kingdom system to be blessed and you are not producing wealth. Come on. So we have to stop that uh, useless mentality. How are you? I'm blessed, but we don't see anything. You become like a very slogan. Yeah. Uh, slogan. Uh, we have we are blessed going out. We are blessed coming in, but we don't see because when you are blessed, that blessing must cause the result according to kingdom system, not according to the religious system. And people they are afraid about uh, about that message or the so-called prosperity message. And uh, I do understand what you don't respect, you will not attract. Mm. What you do, you don't respect, that thing will run away from you. So, the blessing is the empowerment to prosper. That's the proper definition of the word blessing. Mm. So, when you are, and if you, you Proverb 10, it, said, it didn't say blessings with S. Like a premium. No, it's a blessing single. That automatically mean about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the fact is when you are born again, that means you are the Abraham seed. And you are the automatically heir according to the promise. So it is an insult before God. When you are born again, that means you are, you are blessed by Jesus. And you are not producing what you are called for. So that is... Just wait a minute now. No, you are talking about something which is a little bit further. You are talking about when you are born again, and it's a soul when you are not producing. What you are about to talk about, that? what kind of production we are expecting? Is it something we need to see or we need to produce through the heaven? Can you try to break it down? We are not saved to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Because that's where we are messed up in our theology and our religion. God didn't save us to go to heaven. That's where we have to understand that. When you are saved, of course you will go to heaven for one. Many times I preach about it. In fact, we will not live in heaven. Mm -hmm. Heaven was not created for you. And some may will be disappointed. Because many people are waiting, oh, we'll be walking in the street of gold and uh, I'll be blessed one day in heaven, I have my mansion in heaven. No, you are not safe to go to heaven. In fact, Revelation 21 says, the new Jerusalem come down and will dwell on the earth. The earth was created for you and I, not heaven. And you will not spend eternity in heaven. Revelation 21, go read it. You and I will spend eternity on the earth. We'll go to heaven for a party. They call it the Lamb Supper. The party, 
We spread the party in heaven and the new Jerusalem is not in the heaven, it is on earth. So, when you miss that, then the people they start living in false hope. And then the devil is happy about that, you live in Christianity without impact on earth. But God will send you and I on earth to, to be people of impact, in, impact this generation. In fact, we are born in this time for a purpose, to impact the generation. So, I don't know what is your area of uh, God calling to impact this generation. But when you are, because when you are born again, you okay. No, you are going to another message now. Please make the point. The blessing, then you finish. You have one minute to go. Yeah, I was coming to the blessing. <laughs> So, the truth of matter is this. When you are born again, that means Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. That means you are blessed. You are not waiting to be blessed. But you are blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see that? So we are blessed in Christ Jesus. When you are blessed, in that we call the empowerment. You are empowered to produce. So when you are blessed, according to the God economic system, you have to produce. But when you are calling yourself a born again, but you are not producing, is an insult. And is a uh, the word is coming in French. <laughs> It's something the heaven will never tolerate that. You have to produce, we have to see the blessing. So the blessing, we can't just talk about blessing, sing about blessing, but we don't experience the blessing. That is a, like a living two separate messages. Amen. The message today, we are a life foundation up, which would really help you to take off this year without any problem. My prayer is whatever God said to your life to come to pass and be more tangible. Amen. Now let us read now together. What the Bible says here, but let us read. Try to read some of the evidence of what we are trying to say here. But remember that the Lord God gives you the power to get wealth. The Bible says, when God delivered the children of Israel out of the bondage, out of the bondage, and the Bible said, now you need to remember, He is the one who gives you power to get wealth. It's not because of your own education, it's not because of your own strategy, but God is the one who empowering you to get wealth. Amen. He's the one who's giving you ability in your ability to do well. Oh, come on. Amen. He's the one who's giving you ability on your abilities to do well. And the Bible says you need to remember that. Remember, he's the one who does it. And the Bible says, and that blessing of the Lord, when it's upon your life, doesn't bring sorrow. Now, I have another question now again. This question I will ask again about two more people, then we'll do conclusion. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord doesn't bring sorrow. Pastor Paul, can you come sit here, please? And the brother Wilson, can you come sit this side, please? The Bible said to us, the blessing of the Lord doesn't come with sorrow. But sometimes I understand, we say we are blessed, at the end of that blessing, we see the story change. I start by laughing, at the end of the day, I began to cry. My blessing turned around. But the Bible saying the blessing of the Lord doesn't 
comes the sorrow. You can't stand with the blessing. At the end of the day, you begin to cry around again. Say, oh, what happened to me? I want to give another example. Like today, I say, I bought a car. I bought my car. Oh, I went to auction, okay? No one just happened. You don't want to spend money in auction. Okay? You can buy a car, a guru car, look, guru car outside in the auction. You spend about $3,000. And when you just get out, before you know you are your home, it's already broken the way. When you have it, you drive the big and you say, I'm blessed. But when you get on the road, on the freeway, you break, you begin to look like, how come my blessing change around and I'll bring more sorrow in my life? You get there soon. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. One of my friends is here. When you put the car on that, and uh, one day I was about home and uh, he spent about 3000 Good car. And I was only calling him say, I bought the car at my car. The same day, in auction, the car was broken. I just said, I said, my friend, this, and he keep fixing and fixing and spending until one day, make up man and I just to pray with this car. Bring so. Amen. First of all, what to tell us a little bit, I'll give you about three to five minutes. About the blessing of the Lord that will bring sorrow. Where part of the sorrow comes to the blessing of the Lord? Sometimes the best way to look at something is to go the opposite way. And if we go to 1 Timothy 16, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covered after, they have heard from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So this is the complete opposite to the verse that we were looking at, is that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. But if you go the other way and make money a goal, you'll be pierced through with many sorrows. So there's the opposite. So make sure that you, that you seek God in Matthew chapter 6 verse 32 or verse 31. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what sh where shall we drink, or where shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought for so, so this comes as an adding on to rather than coveting all. So this is what God wants us to be like. The other thing too is when you get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, quite often you're in sin and you're drinking and you're smoking and you're doing, going to parties and clubs and all these things. And when you're delivered, you'll find that instead of just spending your, your substance on useless things, then you'll find that you'll get well because you, you're living sensibly and wisely. So you understand how to operate the principles of saving and, and not fortunate people spending money on things. Quite often people that are earning good money have nothing to show for them. But good Christian principles in management is, is part of the blessing. That is our ability to get wealth, rather than just spend everything you get and not want to save. So if you do all these things, you don't get sorrow. I know people who spend all their money, and then when hard times come, they've got no money, they're in sorrow, because they did not break the principle of saving. So if you do things properly, there's no sorrow with you. Amen. 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 Pastor Paul, we're trying to say something here again about what brings more sorrow in our life about the lack of management. The blessing of the Lord is upon your life and you don't know how to manage it. You open the gate for sorrow in your life. Amen. Brother Wilson. Yeah, I would say that this is a very, um, very deep topic, and I think it has got many layers to it. And I think I'll explain first, uh, I'll wait in front of our friend, but we're clarifying the fact that the blessing is not like the thing, but it's the thing, the proof that the blessing is already there. Now, coming to the issue of the element of sorrow, you'd find, like uh, Pastor Al Albert mentioned about listening to the voice of the Lord, and I think that is covered even someone and I think uh, in the front as well. So the key thing there will be listen to the voice of God and obedience. Now if you look at those closely, you realize that in order to realize the voice of God, you have to be in a place 
We just constantly communicating with God. That's how you can learn his wants. I'm sure Pastor Peter, if he walks his house, he is, he is, he is outside. All his children, they will know that is home. Why? They've heard his voice. Why? Because they know him. I tell you a story. One kid, my family was, um, because his father was always cutting him off at night. When he's, uh, when too much of the sleep. So you wake up you know, during the night and stuff like that. So this kid there was, um, so he, he happened to be moving with his mom. He happened to be moving in the neighborhood. They, come, they came through a bar, they passed through a bar. And the kid said, Mommy, Mommy, this place smells like dead. The dead was a drinker. So he tell me the dead will come home, the kid will be out there, he, he, will, he will smell the alcohol. So I found this time he, he's with his mom that passed through a bar. And she said, Mommy, Mommy, this place smells like dead. Yes. So at the end of the day, the key thing there will be obedience and listen to the voice of the Lord. And one thing that I've discovered is many people sometimes when they go through a crisis, they really get their life in order, they listen to God, they are praying and stuff, and then things begin to happen. They are paralyzed, they are telling God comes down. And naturally sometimes their ability to get from God begins to diminish. And not only that, but also if you look at Ephesians 6 12, it talks about the peril that is out there. Because ultimately as to reward, we have to know and we have to understand. That there is resistance out there. You find, there are, like Pastor Fred was saying, there are people who are good riches, but they are not blessed. Why? Because the enemy has controlled them. That that world that they have, some of you pretty much the enemy is controlling it because they are just vessels because they are under the control and dominion of darkness. That's what the one told. But as a child of God, once you are saved and start moving, the blessing is on the blessing is on your life and you start walking in obedience, listening to the voice of God. It's only a matter of time for things start manifesting. But the key thing there will have to be obedience to the word of God and the voice of God. Not only that, but we have to understand back to Ephesians 6 4. Because you just mentioned that someone God bless and then the God these problems come up there. How should could be faced based on the issue of we talk about legality and someone someone steps outside the word of God, that becomes a curse. Because the blessing is written um, I think in, in Joshua on the way the way Moses had the other guys releasing the blessing and other the cases. The conclusion of that is, if you are in obedience of God's will, of God's plan, you are in obedience. But then if you are outside the will of God, now this kind of many things, even, even, even in the issue of money, because we already talked about how we are in the, in, in the God system, in the world system. If you are in the God system, God talks about tithing. Not like you can. Now, that element is also, it's a key, F, in, it's a key factor as well. In the sense that many people think that tithing is given God leftovers. But God wants to be That means before you spend your money, the 10% has to be given to God. That means you are giving reverence to God. When you do that, things begin to happen. But many people sometimes they give God leftovers. And then they are such a penalty to But last thing I want to say is Ephesians 6 4 gives us a key because whenever there's a promise, there's, there's provision. Whenever there's a, there's a promise, there's an enemy. People are able to understand that. Amen. Amen.